Hello YouTubers, today we're going to do an unboxing and then take a look at the new Bose RV 42 quart refrigerator freezer. I apologize for the light, it seems to be a little bit dark in here, but uh, I guess we're just going to see if we can live with this. It looks like it might be alright. But as far as the unboxing, the first thing I did after I let it set uh, right side up for an extended period of time, I tipped it up and I cut the tape on the bottom for both boxes and then folded out my flaps. This is going to make it a lot easier to remove the box and uh, get at the, the actual uh, uh, refrigerator freezer. And that seemed to work pretty good. It's pretty well wrapped up. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the plant or the, the foam. Yeah. It's pretty well protected. I'm not too worried about any hidden damages, but we'll have a good look at it. Now uh, here's the back of it. Uh, very looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, had a little bit of heft to it. I think it probably weighed maybe about 40 pounds or so, uh, if that. But uh, it wasn't too hard for me to get out, you know, take it out of the box or lift it up. Uh, a couple things that's got on it is there's a 15 amp fuse. There's your AC uh, or your power supply there that are your plug for it. And then you've also got a switch. And that switch is for low, medium, and high. What that does for you is that's uh, your power level. So if you have it in a vehicle, you know, such as a car, and you're going to keep it plugged in there on the cigarette lighter all the time or your 12 volt outlet, having it on low will prevent it from draining all of your power out of your battery. And so that way you'll be able to start the vehicle when you get ready to start it and you won't be stuck out in the middle of no man's land. The next thing is the control panel which is on the top. And then the one thing I don't like about this, it's at the back of the fridge. It's not at the front. It seems like it would be more make more sense to have the controls up at the front to where it opens up. This is the outside look of it. And then this is the front. I haven't got the handles on yet, but I'll be putting those on shortly. And then we have a little piece of tape here. We'll go ahead and open this up. And then this is your compartment. Inside we've got a box with the accessories. Uh, also your basket with your divider and then your refrigerator compartment. One thing about this particular freezer fridge is that it can be all one fridge or else it'd have to be this half would be a freezer and then this half would be refrigerated so you could have like soft drinks or whatever into it. But you can't have it all one solid freezer. So on the inside you'll find a handy dandy little chart and that tells you what your levels should be at as far as your, or your settings for meat, frozen food, seafood, vegetables, cooked food, water, canned drinks, fruits, soft drinks and alcoholic uh, drinks and so basically especially the um, canned drinks such as soft drinks like pops and that sort of thing you know soft drinks well something like that if it's carbonated you want to make sure that temperature range is within those limits if you get it down below freezing you're going to have a mess on your hands so you want to make sure that those levels stay up uh, to where it's safe for your uh, drinks not to freeze up 
and explode on you. On the back, just over the control panel, it does give you your uh, instructions as far as how to turn it on and off, how to set it for eco. Uh, this also has your service numbers if needed, uh, how to set your temperature settings, and then also how to change it from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now I'll go ahead and open up the box to pull out uh, what they sent you. This would probably be uh, cords and that sort of thing. Get that open. There we go. Okay, let's open this up, take a look at it. Okay, inside here, and I'm going to keep these right in the bag. This is my 12 volt power supply or plug. This is the handle which I'm going to be putting on. Okay, and this is our AC power supply. You know, so I can you can plug it right in. Just pushes in there, so make sure I got it right. I'm not looking to convert that to instructions, but it's kind of universal. And the instruction booklet. That's uh, pretty simple. It looks like it's not real clear. That's mostly what I've heard as far as the translation on it. I've also been told that this particular freezer fridge comes under several different names and so but just for giggles and grins we know it as a Bogue or Bogue RV and so and this one was pretty highly recommend, recommended uh, I know Robo or Hobotech uh, did a, uh, a review on this as well as uh, the smaller one and the larger one and RV with Tito also did this one so uh, had a real good price on Amazon and so that's why I went with it. I wanted something with both that will do both freeze and refrigerate it because when we travel down south to especially Florida we run into a lot of problems as far as when we're buying having enough freezer space or refrigeration space. <coughs> now, <coughs> Now, as I said in the box, there's the handles. Also, there's a tool to install the handles with. And this also had a couple of spare feet, you know, for the bottom in case you have a problem like they either fall off or they rubbed off or get damaged. You've got an extra pair of feet there for it. Now, I'm going to cheat and use my drill, and this is a 5 30 seconds Allen bit, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the screws out. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to do the right side on the front. Go ahead and cinch it in. Not going to do them too tight yet.
And I'm going to start it, I think, with this hand tool, see how that works. There we go. Now go ahead and tighten her down. Next thing you want to do is slip the bar in, or the handle. And that's notched, so it just slips in one way. And that should make this one rather easy to install. Again, I'll use a little tool. That helps me find the hole. pretty tough. Now one of the videos I watched there was supposed to be some filler holes or filler caps for this but I didn't see any. I'm not going to worry about it. I could probably pick something up at the hardware if it really gets on my nerves. But I think it'll be alright. Now I'm going to spin this around. And I'll do the same thing on the back side. Got my little roll of tape so I can drop my screws in the center that way I don't lose them. And I'll take my little tool. That's easy enough to find. And while it's still loose, timing me, it looks like it's not even taking five minutes. That's not too shabby for an old guy. Let's put the bottom one in first this time and see if that's easier. Yeah. I think I like that better. Put the bottom screw in first and then put the top one in to get it started. And my handles are installed. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into my power strip that I've got behind here next to the table. That's been another one of my favorite little upgrades by putting that power strip just below the window and above the table. It gives me like four outlets in front of you there. You know, if I'm spinning this thing around, it sure works a lot better <laughs> if you tip it out of the side. Okay, she's plugged in, and lights are all flashing. Okay, so I'll turn the power on. Press and hold it. There we go. Okay, it's set at 43 degrees. This is eco mode. 
This is really quiet. That's set for zero. Right now it's 43 degrees on the inside. And like I said, this is the bad part about it. You can see that or not there. Let's move this up. But the trouble with this is my control panel and temperature is on the front or on the back, but to load it, it opens up from the other end. So basically what I'm going to have to do is spin this around and lift up and that's it. So and you can see there is a little you have a little light on the inside. This is your basket that comes out. And in the very bottom, let's see if we can get a good look at that. You can see we've got a couple of places like if you have a couple of two liter bottles or whatever, it gives you a little bit extra height for those. So it kind of tells me there might not be all that much room. Also, if you look at the lid, there's a couple of spots right there. That's for your, that's for the uh, caps or the tops of the soft drink bottles or wine bottles, whichever it happens to be. And we're going to let this run for a little while and see how it works out. I'll try to keep an eye on the temperature and see what it comes up at. Um, I understand it might be a couple degrees off. But we'll give it a look, see, and I'll do a review on it. Either probably in about a week or two after we use it. Uh, if not, then probably towards uh, just before Christmas, because by that time uh, we'll have it packed up and we'll be taking it down as far as Tennessee, and we're going to be down in Tennessee over Christmas before we head down towards Florida. So. But in the meantime, we'll give it a look see. Overall, I think it's quite nice. Uh, I did notice on the larger one, uh, I think that's a 52 quart. That one, it's got um, uh, spots, or it's got actually places put, to put soft drinks or glasses on. It's definitely a lot larger. I didn't really think I had the room, and uh, I really didn't need that much more. We just needed enough to take care of our overflow. And the place I'm going to end up putting it is going to be right over there on the side booth. Uh, I'm going to see if it fits in there and we'll see how that works out. In fact, we'll get that old shot right now. I'll pull out a couple of things I've got stuck in there. And we'll slide her in. that's going to be a good travel spot for it. I'm not sure where we're going to end up keeping it uh, when we get into our parking spots. I could probably have it someplace here in the, in the main room or else put it underneath the bed. Uh, I'll have to work that out later. In the meantime there is enough room where it looks like Marilyn could probably sit right next to it and then, of course, a big guy like me, you know, I could always sit on the other side. So, I apologize if this is making some noise when I'm turning this. It has a tendency to pick that up. So, anyway, so we'll come back and take a look at that probably in about a week or so. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Bose RV 12-volt refrigerator freezer. 
And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And most of all, thanks for watching.